Okay, so for the last lectures, we've been talking out about tumors. We have talked about benign and malignant tumors. So this is basically a summary of what are benign and malignant tumors. So here, these are the characteristics of the benign tumors. Alam natin na they are localized and invasive, well encapsulated. They can be fixed, sessile, or pedunculated. Slow growing can be asymptomatic. And if there is pain, it is because of secondary infection present. And we all know that benign tumors can also become malignant. On the other hand, we also have malignant tumors, also known as cancer, carcinoma, or sarcoma. And these are the characteristics of a malignant tumors, namely invasive, poorly differentiated, and sometimes can be a result from unknown causes. We all know that malignant tumors has the metastatic capability. These are the following five S in malignancy. We have the smoking, spicy foods, spirits, syphilis, sunlight, and sepsis. Spirits, yung smoking, spicy foods, well, alam natin somehow yan, that, that they can increase. Okay? Spirits here are not those ligaw na kaluluwa. Spirits here means the alcohol be alcoholic beverages. Okay? Kasi minsan, kapag nakainom, sinasaniban sinas sinasan sinasan tayo ng kakaibang spirito. Ama. We also have syphilis or sunlight. Pwedeng either good sa dalawa. And lastly, sepsis. Okay? So these are the five S in malignancy. Okay, so here we are we're going to talk all about oral squamous cell carcinoma. Oral squamous cell carcinoma is a very big problem. It's a major problem in oral health. Kasi, when it is diagnosed at, the, at a later stage, it can cause increase in morbidity and mortality. So here are the incidence and mortality of scream, oral squamous cell carcinoma. 90% of all the oral cancers in the oral cavity or the oral malignancies in the cavity is composed of oral squamous cell carcinoma, 90%. And the remaining 10% is a mix of all the oral ca cavity cancers. OSCCA or this oral squamous cell carcinoma is the number 16, top 16, cancer in female and while for, for males, it is top 11 cancer. There are numerous reports on, in the literature about the prevalence or the incidence and mortality of oral cancers. And sa iba ibang lugar to, it depends actually on this following. Okay? So yung incidence ng oral OSCCA sa isang population um, is based on the habits of the oral oral of the population. Some countries, like in the Americas, iba yung habits from those who are in Europe. And those in Europe, iba yung habits nila from, the, uh, from those in the Africa. And those in the Africa also has the uh, different habits from those in Asia, same as well in other co continents. Okay. Also, there are different life expen expen expectancies of humans in different countries. Okay. As far as I know, Japan has the oldest individual, current living individual. So, mas malaki yung life expen expectancy nila doon compared sa Philippines. Around 60 or 70 ata on the average sa Philippines. It, it will also depend on the preventive education as instructed or as um, governed by the government. And lastly, because of the accuracy of disease reporting, kasi may mga ibang cases na hindi na nare-report. Okay? May ibang cases na hindi na nare-report. Kasi yung iba dito, katulad sa Philippines, pwedeng yung tao ay nakatira sa pinaka-pinaka most rural areas ng Philippines. And sometimes, Hindi na, hindi na sila nakakita ng doctor or dentist before they even 
um, be treated, gumaling, or minsan, mamamatay na lang sila nang walang nakikitang doktor. Okay. Worldwide, in 2005, OSCCA is the 11th most common cancer. And India has the highest incidence of oral cancer. Dahil due to tobacco chewing habits. Okay. Dati, sabi nila, mas mataas daw ang incidence sa male. However, magkaroon nata ng shift or changes ngayon kasi pati sa female, nakikitaan na nila ng increased incidence. Siguro dahil ay may mas madami na yung bilang ng mga babae, there are more female or women who are um who are already smoking. Smoking. Okay. And previously, it was also reported that OSCCA only occurs on older patients. However, there is a trend now wherein even young people has a high risk of developing oral squamous cell carcinoma. Again, because of the vices, because like, yung, like for example, smoking and drinking alcohol, alcohol drinking, mas available na ngayon sa mga mas younger generations, katulad natin. Yeah, there is an increasing trend also in young people. Here, is a graphical representation of the incidence of OSCCA cases cases from 2018 projected up until 2040. So meron daw increase in trend from 2018 to 2014 in Philippines on both gender. And if hihimayin natin, makikita natin na even if higher pa din yung incidence sa male and be, uh, compared to female, meron pa din increase in trend. Parehas pa rin silang pataas. Huh? Same din sa mga sa death. There is a projected death from 2018 to 2040 increasing din on both gender. Ganun din sa kapag pinaghiwalay yung gender. Although mas madami sa males compared sa females, there's still an increasing trend of death fra projected from 2018 to 2040. Dito lang sa Philippines yan. Pero titignan nyo, pero titignan nyo, medyo mababa yung bilang. Kasi sa tingin ko, mas mataas pa talaga yung bilang ng merong oral squamous cell carcinoma sa Philippines compared dito sa reported, dito sa dito sa um, graph na to. Okay. So then, we have the etiology. We have the etiology. We have two types, extrinsic and the and intrinsic. For extrinsic, extrinsic, we have the following, tobacco smoking, alcohol, sunlight, occupational exposures, and environmental pollutants. So, kanina ko pa sinasabi yung tobacco smoking and alcohol drinking. And we all know that sunlight can also cause oral squamous cell carcinoma. For occupational exposures, those who are working in salon, mas high risk sila of having squamous cell carcinoma kasi yung mga sprays na ginagamit sa salon contains um, chemicals that can cause oral squamous cell carcinoma. Also, one example of occupational exposure are those miners working in asbestos mining. Environmental pollutants. Well, madami na talaga to. Hindi lang oral squamous cell carcinoma yung pwede nilang ikos, kundi iba-ibang sakit pa yung pwede nilang ikos itong environmental pollutants. Okay? On the other hand, we have intrinsic. So we have here the vitamin or mineral deficiencies, dietary factors, bacteria, candida, oncogenic viruses, immunosuppression, and oncogenes. Okay? So yung intrinsic, ibig sabihin, Nang mangyayari ito sa loob ng katawan. Okay? So, hindi natin alam. Minsan, kulang tayo sa vitamins and mineral. And then, ito pala, nagiging chronic na hanggang sa pwedeng maging cause ng inflammation to cause squamous cell carcinoma. Same as dietary factors, sa bacteria, viruses, and immunosuppressions. I would like to clarify on this one, sa oncogenes. These oncogenes are not the same as those with the genes 
na nakukuha natin sa parents. Okay? Ang itong mga oncogenes na to are those genes na meron tayo. Itong oncogenes na to are yung mga genes na meron na tayo pero nag-undergo sila ng mutation. Ito yung oncogenes. Iba to sa genes or genetics. Genetic um, materials na nakukuha natin sa mga parents natin. Okay? So we have different types of OSCCA according to appearance. We have exophytic, endophytic, leukoplakic, erythroplakic, and erythroleukoplakic. This one is an example of exophytic. Exo meaning pataas, ah, palabas. Yan, palabas siya. Then we have endo. Endo meaning paloob, loob siya. So hindi masyadong pansin. Except that mukha siyang may ulceration. Then we have leukoplakic, lupisha, kasi leuko means white. And then we have erythroplakic, erythro means red, mukhang red, mas red siya. And then we have erythroleukoplakic, which, is, which means is a mix of red and white color. Among these five types according to appearance, may isa dyan na sobrang tuso kasi hindi natin alam na cancer na pala siya. And yan ang aalamin ninyo kung ano yun. Okay. Tingin nyo ano yun. Exophytic, endophytic, leukoplakic, erythroplakic, or erythroleukoplakic. Okay. Aside from the types according to um, appearance, we also have types according to locations. First of all, kapag dinivide kasi natin yung oral cavity, lahat ng oral cavity, we have the lip area, lip or vestibule area, the oral cavity proper area, and the aura, oropharyngeal area. Okay? Pero kadalasan, hiwala yung oral, oral cavity sa oral pharyngeal area. Okay? So let's start. So first is the lip vermilion carcinoma. Ito siya. Dito siya sa unahan. This is common um, on people with light skin because of the chronic exposure to sunlight. And 70% of lip vermilion carcinoma are due to out, outdoor occupations. Ito yung, may, ito yung mga farmers o yung mga tatrabaho sa labas ng bahay. Yung mas exposed sila sa sunlight. And 90% of um, lip vermilion carcinoma occurs in the lower lip. Bakit kaya? Pansinin nyo mabuti. Saan ba nangagaling yung sunlight? Galing sa taas, di ba? So that explains why the lower lip is the most um, area kung saan nagkakaroon ng lip vermilion carcinoma. And lastly, lip vermilion carcinoma has a tendency for perineural invasion or ini-invade niya yung mga nerves. Okay, so this is an example of lip vermilion carcinoma. Second, we have the intraoral carcinoma. It usually occurs in the tongue and fur of the mouth. Ito na yun, in the oral cavity proper area. It can also occur in the gingiva, buccal mucosa, labial mucosa, and hard palate. Ang pinaka um, suspect for this one is the tobacco smoking. And because there is already increase in trend na paggamit ng, ng sigaret sa mga babae, kaya nagiging um, common na itong intraoral carcinoma sa female. Okay. Yan. Mukhang longganisa. The next, we have the oral pharyngeal carcinoma. Lastly, ito yung nag-occur sa soft palate, base of tongue, and tonsillar region. Ito yung mga nasa likod. Okay? And if oral pharyngeal carcinoma happens to be on the posterior pharyngeal wall, 70% to 80% sure tayo that this can be because of the HPV, HP virus or the human papilloma virus. Yung appearance nito is same as the Cancer lang dito sa lip vermilion tsaka intraoral cancer. Same thing. And minsan, hindi na, um, ito yung pinakamahirap kasi hindi natin nakikita yung oral oropharyngeal carcinoma. Kagad. Kaya kadalasan, late diagnosis yung nangyayari. Okay? So means, ma, magtataka, magtataka ka na lang talaga minsan na yung mga pasyente with persistent sore throat, dysphagia, and odinophagia, minsan ni-check nyo na kaagad baka kasi oropharyngeal carcinoma yung meron sila. Okay? So, ano nga ba yung dysphagia and odinophagia? Alamin nyo yan. Kasi isa dyan, 
Take out yung swallowing and isa dyan, yung pain upon swallowing. So this is an example of an oropharyngeal carcinoma. There. This is a radiographic representation of oral squamous cell carcinoma. Although oral squamous cell carcinoma occurs in the mucosa, it can also occur on the bone. Lalo na kapag super invasive na yung, um, yung lesion, pag invasive na masyado. Okay. So kailangan nyo din malaman nito kasi may mga lesions din na can also appear like this one. Specifically, the osteomyelitis. So if you happen to see a radiographic appearance like this one, you can think of two different uh, differential diagnoses already. Osteomyelitis and oral squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So we all know that um, all carcinoma has a tendency of metastasis. Okay. So dito, pinapakita lang na it can metastasize to the lymph nodes. Kaya yung iba, meron tinatawag ng neck dissection or tinatanggal yung mga lymph nodes nila para ma-prevent na yung further spread ng oral carcinoma sa surrounding tissue or surrounding organs. Okay. Here is a TNM um, staging. So T means primary tumor, sinusukat yung size ng tumor. And for um, lymph node involvement and M for metastasis. So makikita dyan, depende sa size, depende sa lymph node involvement, and kung meron metastasis or wala. Yung staging niya, it depends on this TNM classification. Those with um, T, 0, NO, and MO can be classified under stage O. For stage 1, lahat na may um, T1 pero walang N and walang M will be under stage 1. For stage 2, lahat ng T2 except ah, lahat ng T2 na walang node involvement and metastasis under stage 2. For T3, stage 3, lahat ng T3 and N1. For stage 4, lahat ng T4 and N pataas. Tsaka may M1. Okay. So this is a his is a histopathologic feature of an oral squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So meron tayong well-differentiated and poorly differentiated. This one is considered as well-differentiated. Bakit? Kasi meron tayong keratin pearls. Kapag na, uh, ito mga keratin pearls na ito, ito yung mga deposition ng keratin ng mga individual epithelial cells. Diba ang keratin, nakikita lang yan sa surface. Pero pag squamous cell carcinoma, nakakaroon ng keratin formation sa loob ng connective tissue. Invade na ng epithelial cells yung connective tissue. So on a, on a, magnific in more, on a more magnification um, level, ito yung keratin pearl. Makita nyo yan. Puro keratin yan. Keratin pearl, keratin pearl. So this can be considered as well differentiated kasi alam pa nila na sila ay epithelial cell. Alam pa na ng mga cells, epithelial cell sila at, at dapat sila mag-produce ng keratin. For poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, wala tayong makikita ng keratin pearls kasi hindi na nila talaga alam kung epithelial cells ba sila o ano. Minsan minimimik na nila yung ibang cells. Kaya nagme-metastasize nagme sila o kumakala. And hindi maganda yun. Okay. So another example of um, well-differentiated ng OSCCA kasi may mga keratin pearls pa tayo. Yeah. Okay. So kanina nabanggit natin yung extrinsic and intrinsic etiology. Of course, for an individual to have an oral squamous cell carcinoma, kailangan may risk factors. So na-identify na yung mga risk factors at and here are some. So smoking, alcohol drinking, and socioeconomic status. This socioeconomic status actually can increase oral cancer risk. Lalo na in a country like the Philippines na sobrang laki ng gap na mayayaman sa mayayara. So isa-isahin natin. First of all, smoking. Ano-ano ba yung effects ng smoking sa loob ng mouth? We have the following. Discoloration ng ngipin. Halitosis, hairy tongue, discoloration ng gums, dentures stomatitis, oral candidiasis, 
periodontal diseases, smoker's white patch, or leukoplakia, and lastly, of course, walang kang huwag kakalimutan, ang oral cancer. So, ito, ito yung mga effects ng smoking sa loob ng bibig. So, sabi nila, sabi ng studies, tobacco, kahit anong form pa yan, either chewing or smoking, is the most important risk factors. There is also a dose-response relationship, meaning the higher you uh, the higher intake of um, smoking or cigarettes, the higher the risk of a person is. Sabi nila, um, the earlier you start smoking at a young age, the higher risk. Kasi mas maaga nagsimula magsigarilyo, mas naiipon yung uh, mga chemicals o yung mga nangyayaring changes sa loob ng bibig due to smoking. And of course, kapag nagtigil na ang isang, uh, if a person stops smoking, there is a decrease or slowly decreasing trend ng risk of an individual to having oral squamous cell carcinoma. So these are some of the chemicals found in tobacco. She include, ayan, ito nyo, um, acetone, ginagamit sa cutex, ammonia, benzene, cadmium, formaldehyde, formaldehyde, ginagamit sa patay, cadmium, lead for battery, methanol, tar, acetic acid, arsenic, butane, carbon monoxide, ito yung lumalabas sa mga tambut yun ng mga sakyan, hexamine, naphthalene, ito yung mga mothballs, and nicotine. Okay. So, if gusto nyong lang hapin ito, huwag na kayo magsigarilyo. Tumapat na lang kayo sa tambutyo ng sasakyan para lahat malanghap nyo. Okay? Para sigurado, tutok nyo doon yung ilong ninyo mismo doon sa butas ng tambutyo. Yan, para solve na solve kayo. O kaya kung di naman, kung ayaw nyo, uh, kung di nyo talaga mapigilan, pasukan nyo ng mothballs yung ilong nyo para yun yung nakakamoy ninyo. Tingnan natin kung hindi pa kayo magsawa. Okay? Pero kidding aside, smoking is really, really bad for the health. Okay, with all these chemicals found in tobacco smoke. Okay, I wouldn't be, uh, will no longer be discuss, discussing in details the pathophysiology, but um, ayun na nga, carcinogens in tobacco can induce DNA, DNA changes. And some of these DNA changes is the mutation of the tumor suppressor gene, the P53, which can um, induce accumulation of DNA changes and can increase risk of an individual of having oral squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. But don't worry, kasi even if you smoke, sabi nila, yung risk daw ng mga na uminto na ng paninigarilyo more than 10 years is comparable to those as non-smokers, to those as to as the non-smokers. Okay, so... The longer you stop smoking, the, ch the higher chances na nagiging nanonormalize yung risk or na bumababa yung risk mo of having OSCCA. Okay. Or, so, advice on cessation, um, hindi lang to depende sa dentist, but pati sana yung mga doctor, mga medical doctor, alam din kung paano mag-advise kung paano ihinto yung smoking. Okay. Kailangan yung look out for signs and symptoms, um, take histo uh, proper history taking, mouth and throat examination, and pag nakita niya lahat ng symptoms na yan, you can promote cessation. And, or even if you, um, hindi pa kayo nakakita yet ng mga symptoms na yan, sabihin nyo na na tumigil ng paninigatilyo. Kasi it's really bad for the health. Okay. So, if you want to know more about tobacco cessation, you can read on this one. Okay. You can download the manual on, on this link. Okay, in relation to smoking, we all know that there is an increased trend of using vape. vape. Nung una, sabi nila, mas safe daw to kasi unlike the cigarette smoking, chemical to atin hindi direct. Hindi direct yung pag-inhale ng mga smokes. May filter daw. However, sa ibang studies, na nakakita na meron effect din or associated din sa increased trend ng oral carcinoma yung mga vaping. Okay? Okay, hindi pa sigurado pero sabi nila possibly meron daw association ito. Furthermore, there are also report, reported cases na sumasabog yung vape. So, aside from oral cancer, minsan, 
baka maapektuhan pa yung mukha ninyo. Kasi sasabog na lang. Okay? Di ba may na-report ng ganun na sumabog na lang bigla? Dahil mali yung component ng vape na ginamit. Aside from that, sabi nila, yung vaping din daw na mamagnetize niya or mas lalong na-hype sa mga kabataan. So, yung mga kabataan, medyo marupok pa. So, kung hindi na kontenta sa vaping, minsan, mag-curious yan, mag-take talaga sila ng smoke. Okay? Hindi ko alam kung nangyari sa inyo yon pero, yan, siguro, based on experience na lang, tignan natin kung totoo ba talaga. So, instead of sa vaping lang talaga, minsan, nag-graduate at na-promote into o giging smoker. Okay. Second na risk factor is alcohol drinking. Yan. So, sabi nila, meron din daw talaga association. Even if hindi ka-level ng smoking is yung alcohol drinking sa pagiging risk factor, meron at meron din talaga siya association. Okay. The problem is, kapag pinagsabay ang smoking and alcohol drinking, nagiging synergistic yung relationship nila. Sabihin, nagdodobol nag nagdodobol yung effect nila tinutulungan nila as isa't isa para mag-develop ng oral cancer ang isang individual kaya tinawag na synergistic relationship kasi bakit paano kasi dahil ang alcohol dissolves those chemicals na sa sigarilyo and it can easily penetrate the oral epithelium and can cause mutations and DNA changes in the oral epithelium in return, magiging oral squamous cell carcinoma. mo. Kaya, avoid smoking and drinking. Okay. So, question. Tanong ko sa inyo dati, pati dun sa assignment ninyo, is oral cancer susceptibility inherited? Okay. So, nabasa nyo naman siguro ito. Ang sagot dito is, oral cancer ay hindi ko namamana. However, oral cancer, um, the risk of oral of, of having oral cancer is yun yun namamana. Uh, like for example, let me clear on that. Oral cancer is not directly inherited. However, ang na-inherit natin, the one that we, can, we inherit from our parents are the risk factors. For example, May mga diseases, certain diseases that we uh, inherit, uh, na inherit ng, ba, ng anak or magulang. Um, one example is Fanconi anemia. Fanconi anemia is an, is an inherited disease or lesion or condition that can increase an individual's risk of having oral squamous cell carcinoma. Kaya ang oral cancer is not inherited. However, the risk factors of having oral cancer can be inherited. Okay, sana clear sa inyo yun. Second question, is oral cancer preventable? Yes, it can be prevented. Ano? Through the campaigns, early diagnosis, because marunong mag mouth self-examination, and early screening, and prevent diagnostic delays. So, however, for this one, the campaigns, more of Sana mas maging active pa yung government when it comes to campaigns on how to um, to decrease, to reduce the risk of oral cancer. Okay, so medyo nagiging okay naman yung campaign sa smoking kasi may mga features na at tumaas yung price ng smoking. Pero hindi ko alam kung sapat na ba na yun na maging campaign ng government on um, reducing oral cancer cases. Okay. Philippines kasi, although may poster tapos mahal, hindi pa din hinahanapan ng IDs. In Thailand, before they sell um, uh, smokes or cigarettes to people, they still uh, they look for the national ID at makikita doon kung ilang taon ka na. And kapag mm, hindi ka na minor, pagbabentahan ka naman nila. Okay. Furthermore, pati yung alak, may certain time lang na makakabili ng alak doon. Hindi 24-7 na nabibili yung mga alak. Okay. So, uh, basta may certain time lang na pwedeng bumili ng alak. 
hindi ka pwedeng mag um, happy hour every every hour. Okay? Eh sadly din na uh, may mga ganito, cigarette candy, no? So na nagiging ano din nagiging nagiging somehow factor din to para dumami yung mga nagii-smoke kasi bata pa lang, ayan, nakikita nila sa magulang nila, ini-try nila yung mga candy. So as, as these children, as these kids grow up, medyo nakakasanayan na nila na parang ah, spirit dito okay lang kasi nakikita ko naman uh, that uh, my parents are adults in my surroundings and in my neighborhood in my neighborhood are using cigarettes. So I think, sabi na ng mga bata, I think this is still okay. Okay? Ayan. So that is oral schema cell carcinoma. To summarize what we have, what you had for the uh, for the um, time being, uh, for the past few hour, few minutes, oral schema cell carcinoma is common to males. Has a male predilection with an average age of 40 years old. Okay? And if we do campaigns, the real impact of these campaigns is on the restriction and elimination. So better if may restrict yung um, distribution ng or selling ng mga cigarettes. Okay? Kung magagawang ma-eliminate, better. Sana, para wala na talagang risk due to smoking. And then the problem is that some um, cases um, late na na-diagnose. This is because of the socioeconomic status of an individual. Well, alam naman natin na pag mayaman, mas mabilis or meron silang access readily to um, diagnosis. I mean, to doctors, to hospital, to treatment. Samantalang yung mga nasa pinakamababang margins, mga nasa laylayan, hit up with this one. Kasi may mga priority sila bukod sa kanilang health. Okay, priority and pagkain, priority and bills, and other more. Okay, so oral cancer is a public policy and a complex issue. Good. Okay, medyo controversial to. Kaya, even if gustuhin ng nakararami, kung meron naman sa government natin ang hindi okay sa kanila na itigil to, hindi talaga matitigil to. Kaya sobrang controversial nito. Parang mariwana. Okay. So, yun. So, sana, before we believe on different haka-haka or sabi-sabi, sana, we should look into researches that provide some evidences para mas establish natin yung long-term or realistic effect approach. Kung ano nga ba yung impact ng mga paniniwalang ito sa incidence ng oral spirimosal person. Okay, so, yun. Sana, matrit na at ma-address ma ng maayos ng oral cells carcinoma. And that is the end of this lecture. Thank you very much for listening.